Hey everybody, welcome to class today. Um, this is our geometry class, and so what we're going to be doing in this class is kind of going through the different concepts of geometry, learning a whole lot about uh, the topic. Um, let's kind of start off with just by kind of introducing what is geometry? What do you think we're going to be doing in this class? Well, uh, the word geometry is, is kind of the study of, of the earth or measuring the earth. And we find a lot of shapes in the earth. We find a lot of different um, triangles and circles and rectangles all around the world, in the world around us. And so in geometry class, what we're going to be doing is we're basically going to be learning how those shapes work. Uh, we're going to be learning um, different things about those shapes, how to measure them, how to figure out things about them. But really, geometry class is, yes, it's about those things in a way, but really the, the heart and soul of geometry class is this. You are going to learn how to logically think in this class. Something that, that you really haven't done a lot of up until this point, to be honest with you. And there's reasons for that. Well, one of the reasons is your brain is just now forming the logical center. Uh, your brain is very complex. And so all the way through your development as, as a young child, uh, different parts of your brain are expanding and different parts of your brain are opening up. Um, but just um, a few years ago, really 14, 15 years old, is when the logical part of your brain really starts to open up and uh, being able to receive and be able to understand uh, logic. And so um, geometry is a lot about logic. And in algebra, here's what we learned in algebra. We learned how to follow the rules in algebra, how, how to follow the steps. Okay, so you got to do number one first, then you got to do number two, then you got to do number three. In geometry, what we're going to be learning is, is this, how to logically come up with steps one, two, and three. They don't give you steps one, two, and three. They say you come up with steps one, two, and three. And so now what we're going to be doing is kind of just taking our math abilities to the next level. Uh, some students even say, Mr. Steve, is this even a math class? Like six, you know, six weeks into this class, you're going to be thinking, I don't even think this is a math class. It is a math class, and but more so than a math class, it's a logic class. You're going to learn how to logically solve problems and come up with a plan to solve that problem, okay? And so that's what's going on, and we're going to use shapes to do that. Um, it's just the shapes are kind of like a vehicle that we're going to use to accomplish that goal. The goal is to be able to think more logically and to be able to um, solve problems better. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I do want to say something before I really kind of get into this too much. Um, in, in geometry, there's a lot of things that are called um, corollaries, postulates, axioms, um, theorems, all these different things. That there's words. These words mean, here's what they mean. They are like rules. They're laws that you can't break. Well, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to teach you this material without um, infringing or breaking any copyright laws, okay? Because the book is copyrighted. I can't show the book on the screen. I can't uh, copy the book onto the screen. And so I want you to make sure that you have a copy of your book every time that we're going through this so that way you can be looking at your book while I'm talking. So I'm going to be giving you kind of like um, maybe my version or my words of what these things are, what these rules are. And then you will be able to look at the book and see exactly what the book is saying. So um, if you don't have a copy of the book, uh, all of my students in my school should have a copy of the book. If you are just watching um, just this video on YouTube, you, I would suggest you get a copy of the book. The book is Abeka Books, Geometry, Plain Geometry. So go ahead and order yourself a copy of the book, and you can follow along with me uh, as, I'm, as I'm going through it. Okay? Um, all right, so let's talk about a couple things here. First of all, the, the first thing that I want to talk to is um, kind of what we'll be studying as far as kind of like the, the framework of what we're studying. The framework of what we're studying is, the name of the book is Plane Geometry. We're studying things that are in a plane or in multiple planes. 
a plane is just like a flat surface. It, you can think of a piece of paper as a plane, but technically a piece of paper is not a plane because the piece of paper has some thickness to it. Now, it's not very thick, but a, a true plane has no thickness to it. It's just, it's just a surface um, with, without any thickness whatsoever. Um, so if you think of a piece of paper as a plane, then that's good. Now, if you're going to make a box, you could make a box out of paper. You take one piece of paper for the top, one piece of paper on the side, another piece of paper on this side, another piece of paper on the bottom, piece of paper on the front, piece of paper on the back. And you're going to uh, create for yourself um, a box. Okay, so I'm going to use this, um, this program on my computer that I, I hope will help you to see some things. And um, it's, a, it's a good way for us to visually see what's going on. So I can draw... Um, shapes and lines and things on my computer so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with um, we'll, we'll call that a plane it's it's a box it's a square um, now technically a plane goes in all directions okay and it doesn't have any any boundaries but we're gonna use these boundaries and um, we're gonna draw lines on the boundaries and we're gonna make a box okay and so I'm not the world's greatest artist, but I've kind of learned some things over the years as I've been teaching geometry. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of turn this into a three-dimensional object. And this is going to be our, our little box right here, or kind of a cube, but it's not really a cube. So if you look at that, you can kind of see that it's got a top, it's got sides, it's got bottom, it's got front and back, and um, it, there's six sides to that object. Well, technically what that is in geometry is it's six planes that are kind of stacked together. So you have six different surfaces, six different planes that are coming together to form a shape. And that's kind of what geometry is. Geometry is taking the concept of the plane, okay, and um, making it into shapes, making it into different different things. So um, we're going to be working with planes, plane geometry, um, and making shapes with those. All right. So you would call this a rectangular solid. That I guess could be a cube, depending on if all the sides were the same. I want you to notice a couple things about this. When I drew this, um, I I drew this so that this right here. The corners met okay at a little point right here and then they meet again down here and this right here so these are both points a point is the most basic geometrical shape it's not really a shape but it's the most basic geometrical concept and here's why everything and this is important to remember for forever in geometry Everything starts with a point. You can't draw anything without starting with a point. In other words, your pencil at some point has to go down on the piece of paper. You have to start by putting your pencil on, on the point. Okay, And so we're going to start with the point. Well, in this shape, we have several points. I've highlighted two of the points. But if you look, there's a line in between those two points. And so that line is creating the shape and then we put more points more lines and then we create whatever shape that we want so um, this is kind of the basic premise of geometry lines and points um, a circle even if you think about a circle and i'll just draw just a you know a bad circle but this circle right here is not really a circle but let's pretend it is this is just taking a line and then bending the line that's all, we're, that's all we've done. We've taken the line, and then we bent the line. And so that is a straight line. At one point, you could, you could say that was a straight line, but then you took the line, and you bent it around, and then it became a circle by bending the line around. So the, the base of, of all geometry are points and lines. Okay, um, And you can really make all different geometrical shapes with points and lines. Some of them that are bent, some of them are curved lines, but they're all lines regardless. Um, another thing that I want to talk about today is what's called the magnitude or the size of the shape. And so we could, we could draw another one of these and we could change its size. So now I am drawing a second one of these 
but now we are changing the, the shape or changing the size. We didn't change the shape. We changed the size. All right. So basically we have the same exact shape, but it's a different size. It's smaller. So we would say the magnitude of this shape is smaller. Okay. This shape over here on this side is larger in magnitude. This shape over here is smaller in magnitude or size. So make sure you know that word magnitude. Um, a straight line, I already kind of talked about it, is the fundamental shape in geometry. It's, the, it's the, 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 what you have to start with really for anything. Even a curve, you start with a straight line, then you curve the line, okay? Um, all right, and let's talk about instruments or things that we're gonna use in geometry. Um, we use a straight edge, and I, I've got a cool little website that I found. It's a free website. Um, it's called mathpad.co.uk, and you can see that right up here, Math, mathspad.co.uk, and you can use this. And what we can do here is we can see different instruments, and one of the instruments that we can use is called a ruler or a straight edge. Now, with this, what we can do is we can actually draw a straight line. Now, I would have had a real hard time if draw, trying to draw a straight line without, I'm really bad at it, okay? But when I use a straight edge, I can draw a straight line. Now, anything's a straight edge. Your notebook can be a straight edge. A ruler can be a straight edge. Anything that's straight is a straight edge, okay? So it doesn't have to be a ruler. In fact, in geometry, we don't really use the numbers on the ruler very much. You, you're gonna be surprised. We don't use those very much. We do use them some, but we use them very limited. Typically, we use a straight edge, not a ruler. Then we also, in geometry, have a protractor, and this is gonna help us measure angles. We're not gonna use a protractor very often in geometry, um, but there will be times where we do need one, but for the most part, we don't use a protractor. The thing that we use most of the time, and everybody needs to have one of these, is a compass, and a compass is used to draw circles. And so the compass, the protractor, and the straight edge, those are really our three tools that we'll be using all the way throughout three tools, instruments, whatever you wanna call them, uh, we'll be using those in geometry. So make sure you have one, have something that's straight, a ruler would be great. Um, have something, a protractor. I like the little protractors because, you know, those bigger ones like this, um, they end up being too big for the paper and then it's a struggle. So the smaller the protractor, the better they make these little tiny ones. Uh, if you can get one of those, that'd be great. And I would spend just a little bit of money on a good compass because those cheapo plastic ones tend to uh, give you more problems than they're worth. So I would spend a little bit of money and buy a decent uh, protractor for this course. Um, Let's see, what else do we need to know? Uh, the plane, we talked about that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So um, that's kind of lesson one in a nutshell. Um, and then uh, we'll continue on from there. And like I said, you know, you're going to get, you're, it's not going to take you long and you're going to be thinking, oh, this is easy. Come on, Mr. Steve, this class is so easy. And it, and it is at first. It is. You're going to go through the first few weeks and you're going to be like, man, this is so easy. I love this class. And then all of a sudden it's going to start getting harder. So you better pay attention. You better make sure that you have the tools that you need. You better make sure that you know what everything means. Because when I say point, you need to know what that is. When I say line, you need to know what that is. When I say plane, you need to know what that is. When I say magnitude, you need to know what that is. Um, when, I, when I say all these different things, it, it starts to become very important very quickly um, what these different, different things are. Um, one more thing that I want to share with you and then I'll be done um, is I want you to look at this real quick. If I have two points, so I have a point here and I have a point here. The shortest distance between those two points is what we call a straight line. So this is the shortest distance, a line. Um, you could also get there by, by going around the circle. 
okay? But it's gonna take you longer to go around the circle. The shortest distance between any two points is always a straight line. So that's something kind of, the, that's our first um, principle that we're gonna learn. And so you need to make sure that you know that and make sure that you're ready to use that in, in later lessons, okay? All right, see you later. Have a good one, bye-bye.